Good morning. Today is Monday the 17th. Happy birthday, Kelsey and Wendy. Goodness gracious. Nearly forgot. But thank goodness. Uh, happy birthday. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I miss you. I love you. Try not to work too hard. We are going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Um, this one is Joseph Smith translation of Matthew 10, 34. He who seeketh to save his life shall lose it, and he who loseth his life for my sake shall find it. The more you obey your conscience, C.S. Lewis observed, the more your conscience will demand of you, and your natural self, which is thus being starved and hampered and worried at every turn, will get angrier and angrier. It is as though Jesus were saying to each of us, give me all. I don't want so much of your time and so much of your money and so much of your work. I want you. I want, I have not come to torment your natural self, but to kill it. I will give you a new self instead. In fact, I will give you myself. My own will shall become yours. Those who turn, those who those who turn to the Lord and covenant with him travel the path that leads to the abundant life. That life is worth whatever price we are required to pay. And in the end, we shall see there really was no sacrifice. All right. That was a beautiful sentiment. I really like that one. But today we are in. Uh, Learn of me, chapter 42, Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, so we start up, it's like four or five pages, so rather long considering the ones we've done before. Um, but we start with a quote by Paul V. Johnson, And there shall be no more death, April 2016. After resurrection, the spirit will never again be separated from the body because the Savior's resurrection brought total victory over death. In order to obtain our eternal destiny, we need to have this immortal soul, uh, a spirit and body united forever with spirit and immortal body inseparably connected, we can receive the fullness of joy. In fact, without the resurrection, we could never receive a fullness of joy, but would be miserable forever. Even faithful, righteous people view the separation of their bodies from their spirits as captivity. We are released from this captivity through the resurrection, which the redemption from the bands of chains, which is the redemption from the bands of chains and death. There is no salvation without both our spirit and our body. A question for you. Rather than it being taken from him, Christ claims to have laid down his own life. What does that teach me about his atonement? that he was absolutely and utterly willing, that it couldn't be taken from him. It had to be given. It had to be a gift. He had full control. Neil A. Maxwell, quote book from 1997. Christ's victory over death ended the human predicament. Now there are only personal predicaments and from these two, we may be rescued by following the teachings of him who rescued us from general extinction. Ooh, he uses some, like, powerful words. Joseph B. Worthlin, Sunday will come, October 20, 2006. The resurrection is at the core of our beliefs as Christians without... As Christians, without it, our faith is meaningless. The Apostle Paul said, if Christ be not risen... Then is our preaching vain, and our faith is also vain. In all the history of the world, there have been many great and wise souls, many of whom claimed special knowledge of God. But when the Savior rose from the tomb, he did something no one had ever done. He did something no one else could do. He broke the bonds of death, not only for himself, but for all who have ever lived, the just and the unjust, when Christ rose from the grave, becoming the first fruits of the resurrection, he made that gift available to all. 
And with that sublime act, he softened the devastating, consuming sorrow that gnaws at the souls of those who have lost precious loved ones. Sorry. I gotta put that on my on my name board. It's filling out nicely, but I'm in I'm still in first Nephi. And Nephi likes the Lord. He uses the Lord a lot. That is like the main title that he uses for Jesus is the Lord. So I've got a lot of red circles in my book. Not a lot of name variation. But anyways, moving on. <clears throat> How does it affect my own faith and actions to know that Christ is alive forevermore? This one is from Thomas S. Monson. I know that my Redeemer lives, April 2007. My brothers and sisters, we laugh, we cry, we work, we play, we love, we live, and then we die. Death is our universal heritage. All must pass its portals. Death claims the aged, the weary, the weary and worn. It visits the youth in the bloom of hope and the glory of ex expectation. Nor are little children kept beyond its grasp. In the words of the Apostle Paul, It is appointed unto men once to die, and dead we would remain but for one man and his mission, even Jesus of Nazareth. Through tears and trials, through fears and sorrows, through the heartache, and loneliness of losing loved ones, there is assurance that life is everlasting. Our Lord and Savior is the living witness that such is so. Consider the scope of the resurrection, that all shall be raised. What hope does this give me individually and on behalf of others? I don't know if I, like, there is no end, and that even though for those of my loved ones who are not temple-worthy members, that they will be risen again, that there is hope for them, not maybe celestial glory hope for them, but inheriting a kingdom of glory. D. Todd Christofferson, The Doctrine of Christ, April 2012. Joseph Smith's testimony of Jesus is that he lives. I appeal to all who hear and read this message to seek through prayer and study of the scriptures that same witness of the divine character, the atonement, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Accept his doctrine by repenting, being baptized, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and then throughout your life following the laws and covenants of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What role can I play in sweeping the earth with a testimony of Christ's resurrection? That is an interesting thought, sweeping the earth. Um, I know that some people really like to use social media as a platform to keep the name of Christ out there to testify of him. I'm not a fan of social media. Don't have any social media besides YouTube, but um, I'm, I do what I can. I don't know. Um, I think I was talking to a friend last night about The Chosen, and I think The Chosen is doing a good job of teaching people about Christ. It may not be 100% doctrinally sound, but uh, they're, they're doing their part to sweep the earth with the testimony of Christ. All right, the family discussion question. During our mortal life, our body experiences pain and sickness and disability. When we are resurrected, our bodies will be restored into perfect form. Think about times your body has been sick or broken. Uh, a lot lately. Uh, think of people you know who have suffered pain or disabilities. How can the resurrection make everyone whole? How does that make you feel about Jesus Christ? I mean, it's it's a beautiful thought. Like, it's such a hopeful thought that one day, you know, no more knee pain, no more back pain, no more headaches, you know, 
broken bones will be set right. Uh, no more arthritis, no more sore throats, you know, all the good stuff. Um, some additional reading. Detog Christofferson, The Resurrection of Jesus Christ, April 2014. Thomas S. Monson, He is Risen, April 2010. Joseph B. Worthlin, Shirley, Sunday Will Come, October 2006. Dallin H. Oaks, Resurrection, April 2000. Carlos E. Assay, If a Man Die, Shall He Live Again, April 1994. Russell M. Nelson, Doors of Death, April 1992. Alrighty. So that was Learn of Me, Chapter 42. And tomorrow we do Matthew, Chapter 18. And now I will leave you with a prayer from a diary of prayer. One special for Wendy and Kelsey. This one is an ancient Irish prayer. It's a little long, but let's go with it. I offer thee every flower that ever grew, every bird that ever flew, every wind that ever blew, good God. Every thunder rolling, every church bell tolling, every leaf and sod, laudamus te. I offer thee every wave that ever moved, every heart that ever loved, Thee, thy father's well-beloved, dear Lord. Every river dashing, ever, every lightning flashing, like an angel sword, benedictimus te. I offer thee every cloud that ever swept, o'er the skies and broke and wept, in rain and with the flowerest kept, my king. Each communicant praying, every angel stain, before thy throne to sing, Ador Adoramus te. I offer thee every flake of virgin snow, every spring that earth below of earth below, every human joy and woe, my love. O Lord, and all the glorious self or death victorious, throned in heaven above, glorificamus te. I did my best. All right. I love you all. I will see you tomorrow. Not my day off. I have to close. Logan is done with his student teaching. And so he's messed up my schedule quite a bit. And he has me like opening and closing. And it's throwing me off. Not a big fan. But anyways, I got to sleep in this morning. So it's not all bad. Anyways, that's all for today. I love you all. Have a great day. Happy birthday, Wendy and Kelsey. Talk to you later.